Good morning. Tuesday, April the 12th. It is Holy Week and we are heading towards Good Friday in the book of Mark and um, in Holy Week, Good Friday and then Easter. So make plans to go to church um, and worship Jesus on Friday and on Sunday. Don't skip it. This is a, important for your soul, important for the whole church to gather wherever you can go. Go in person and uh, join some people in worship on Good Friday. So here we are, Mark chapter 13, and Jesus yesterday talked about signs of his coming, which were the labor pains of the world. Wars, rumors of wars, um, disease, famine, nation against nation. This is all happening. It's actually happened a lot in the 20th and now the 21st century. And, and uh, before that too, I mean, many people thought, World War One, World War Two was going to be the end of the world, and um, but Jesus said, "Don't panic. It is a labor pain. Yes, the earth is going towards the birth of a new world, where Jesus will come and be king." But he said um, to watch for the signs and to stay alert, and that's where we're at today in Mark chapter three, thirteen. Mark thirteen. I'm going to read verse twenty-eight. Jesus says these words. Now learn a lesson from the fig tree. When its branches bud and its leaves begin to sprout, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see all these things taking place, you can know that his return is very near, right at the door. I tell you the truth, this generation will not pass from the scene before all these things take place. Heaven and earth will disappear, but my words will never disappear. However, no one knows the day or hour when these things will happen. Not even the angels in heaven or the Son himself. Only the Father knows. Verse 33, And since you don't know what time will come, be on guard. Stay alert. For the coming of the Son of Man can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a long trip. When he left home, he gave each of his slaves instructions about the work they were to do, and he told the gatekeeper to watch for his return. You too must keep watch, for you don't know when the master of the household will return. In the evening, at midnight, before dawn, or at daybreak, don't let him find you sleeping when he arrives, and he will arrive without warning. I say to you what I say to everyone, watch for him. This is God's word. So Jesus says, learn a lesson from the fig tree. Um, summer is near. That is good news for all of us that have gone through winter and we're going through a cold April. When all the brutal things of winter in this world happen, and the seasons, they illustrate life, death, and resurrection too, don't they? Fall, winter's death, spring is resurrection. When all the brutal things in this world happen, and they increase in frequency and intensity like labor pains, the new world is just around the corner. I guess you could say when winter starts to flee, it means summer is coming. And Jesus crushed the head of Satan on the cross. He rose again to new life. He's conquered the grave. Jesus is conquering sin. His people are involved in, in the cleanup of the world, in bringing people to him, giving them a chance to come and Volunteer their lives for the service of the king. They're, they're the chosen that Jesus has given the gift of faith to. And they're the ones that choose to be humble and come to him. Jesus said, everyone will see me when I come back. That's what he says here. Verse 26. Everyone will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds with great power and glory. Verse 27. He'll send out his angels to gather his chosen ones from all over the world, from the farthest ends of the earth. So when Jesus comes back, his angels will take us and we will be with Jesus. Jesus is coming back. He's saying this. Heaven and earth, the way things are now, are passing away. Earth won't be the same when Jesus comes back. It'll be a new earth, Revelation 21 tells us. With uh, recreated earth, renovated, no more sin, no more sorrow, no more disease or famine or war. The age of men's petty power men like Putin, 
His power will pass away. Cadillacs, cash, cities, castles of men's power will disappear. But Jesus says, my words will never disappear. What Jesus has to say is the solid bedrock of our lives. His teaching and his words are forever. And however, we just need to trust him because right now it's been chaos, right? He has a plan. None of us knows the day or hour when these things will happen. That's not for us to know. Remember what Larry Osborne said, we're on the welcoming committee, not the scheduling committee, right? So we have to be careful of making predictions. Um, Jesus said, not the angels in heaven or Jesus when he was on this earth. At least then, he didn't know when the return would be. Only the Father knew. And uh, so the disciples are like, When's this, when are these things going to happen? And Jesus said, um, I don't know right now. I'm on this earth living by faith in the Father just like you are. I'm a, I'm a man. I'm God, but I'm, I'm a man. He chose to live like us in faith. So he had to trust God too for timing. Only God the Father has the plan. And remember to trust him about the timing. I've had I've had friends in the past, like six years ago, one friend told me there was a year and a half left on the earth. And that was six years ago. So we got to not make predictions, right? Since you don't know when the time will come, Jesus says, be on guard. Stay alert, exclamation point. <laughs> be awake. Keep an eye out for him. Keep an ear to the sky. Keep uh, at your ears and eyes tuned to scripture. Get to know Jesus, and when that trumpet sounds, you'll know the king is coming. But Jesus says to get ready now. Don't put it off. Get right with God. Get right with man. Don't put it off. Be right with God and with people, and um, let go of, of bitterness. The second coming of Jesus is, is going to be here sooner than you think. And uh, Jesus illustrated it by a man who owned a great estate with many servants. And he went on a trip and he was going to come back. Well, that's exactly what Jesus has done. Jesus said, in John, I've gone to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Jesus says, keep watch. You don't know when I'm going to come back. And uh, he says, don't let him find you sleeping. When he arrives, does that mean I can't go to sleep? That I should stay awake all night and wait for Jesus? No. He says, What I say to everyone is watch for the return. Does that mean I can't fall asleep? No, but it means I don't fall asleep to reality. I don't get lulled into distraction and be unconscious of reality. Don't get lulled into unconsciousness by the carbon monoxide of your pride. Don't get lulled into um, sleep and forget that Jesus is coming back and be unconscious of the realities around you. Be watchful. Be aware. Don't let the carbon monoxide of materialism take you down. And be focusing on building your heaven now. Pour your money into heaven then. That means people. Because only Jesus and people are going to last forever. Be pouring your life into them. Don't let the materialism and greed of this world be the sleeping gas which knocks you out to the reality of why we're here. And that's to go and make disciples of all men, teaching them to obey everything he commanded, remembering that Jesus is with you now in his spirit and he will be with us in person in his body when he comes down to be our king. So don't let bitterness, lust, pride, materialism, or greed, or self-centeredness knock you out. Don't fall asleep. Stay awake, read scripture, listen to the gospel, pay attention, be hopeful. And what that means is Paul says everyone who has this hope purifies himself. We want to become more like Jesus. We want to be focusing on what matters in life. And like I said, that's God and people. Because the glorious news is that soon and very soon, he'll be coming. We'll see him with our own eyes.
Beautiful. Oh my goodness. What a great song. Though I have not seen him, my heart knows him well. That's so awesome. That's what faith is, right? Faith in Jesus. Keep your eye to the sky. Keep your eyes on the Word of God. Keep your ears to the ground. And uh, the train is coming. Let's pray. I thank you, Jesus, that you will keep us until your return. We are your chosen ones, and we thank you, Lord, for the gift of faith. May the whole world realize how much you love them. May they turn to you, Jesus, to be saved. I thank you for this hope. Give us that hope today to light up our lives and the light of the world around us. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May he turn his face towards you, lift up the light of his countenance upon you, and give you peace. Have a good day. I will see you tomorrow.